Hello, welcome to Dungeon Rolls Podcast. I'm your host Justin. Today we're reviewing a Batman uh, trade paperback, which is Batman Arkham Clayface, which is a collection of 14 issues, all featuring Clayface. This costs uh, 20 US, 26 Canadian. I'm not sure when this came out. The latest story in here is like 2013. Right, so the, this book, I can't exactly review all 14 stories because it would take forever, right? Oh, and if anybody's asking, I just digged out some Batman figures I had from uh, st- storage. This is like, I think this is a Japanese figure, Koto Bikuya or whatever they're call- it's called. I think that's, <laughs> that's a uh, Japanese figure, I'm 100% sure. It's been years since I bought it. It's, it's a... From it's basically a Batman figure from the video games, and there's uh, Nolan's Batman, Christian Bale. Yeah. So like, yeah. So um, the 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 comics, right? Here's some. You get to see some Golden Age. So the comics that this uh, book has is Detective Comics issue 40 from 1940. Written by Bill Finger with uh, art by Bob Kane. That's called The Murders of Clayface. The Challenge of Clayface, which is the, from Detective Comics 298 from 1961. Also written by Bill Finger with penciler by Sheldon Moldoff. The Coming of Clayface 3, Detective Comics 478 from 1978. Uh, writer Len Wine mar- with uh, with art by Marshall Rogers, if man may, if man be made of clay, Detective Comics 479 from 1978, written by Len Ryan, Marshall Rogers, Strike Force Cobra, which is an which is a story from Outsiders issue 21 from 1987, with uh, writer Mike W. Barr, artist Jim Aparo. Secret Origins 44, 1989, Mike W. Barr with Dan Rasper, Len Wine, Pencers, Keith Giffen, Bernie Meralt, Tom, Tom Crummelt, Chasing Clay, Batman 550 from 1998, Writers Doug Moench, Pencers, J.H. Williams III with cover by Kelly Jones and John Beattie. That was a good one. Endeline Conclusion was Catwoman, Issue 4, 2002, written by Ed Brubaker with art by Darwin Cook. And Inker Mike Allred. Oh, okay, that's cool. If Man Be Clay, Batman Villains, Secret Files and Origins, Issue 1 from 2005, written by Steve Parcel, art by Mike Mignano. The Shape of Things to Come, Part 1, Batman Gotham Knights, 6 to 8. And that's Part 1 through 4 from Gotham Knights, Issues 68 to 71. which That's from 2006. Written by A.G. Liberman and Al Pernodieu. And the last one is Not Just Another Pretty Face, which is Batman the Dark Knight, 23.3, 2013. Was written by John Lehman. And artist Cleef Richards. So the first issue was kind of cool. It's basically the origins of Batman, sorry, of uh, Clayface, which he, he was. The first Clayface was just uh, a makeup artist slash actor who uh, wanted revenge on on the director, and he didn't have any powers in this issue. He he could just. He would. It was called Clayface because he would use makeup to change his face, right? And this was a cool issue because it was basically Phantom of the Opera with Batman and Robin. So that was cool. And they actually remade this issue, this issue in a later comic in this story. And the second one, the sec, the ne- the next one is basically Batman and Robin versus. The a Clayface who actually has the powers of Clayface that we know of, that we know about Matt Hagen, right? Who was just who was just a guy who who was uh, diving one day looking for buried treasure who found this pool 
about let, letting him transform into like you know uh, this clay face thing that he can sh change his shape right which uh, Bat Batman and Robin obviously stop him and they remade this issue later on in the story this story was kind of cool but like I kind of hated this one because Batman in this one this is the 78 one with uh, Len Wein where in this issue Batman his girlfriend broke up with him and he's going around being the shit out of criminals right and it's like what the fuck Batman like you gotta take it easy dude and this is where you find out the origins of of uh, Bat, uh, Clayface 3 who was just an ugly dude who used the DNA from Clayface 2 to change his face but because of that um, it actually made him worse and every once in a while he has to like melt people or he'll die right or not not he'll just be in incredible pain right so but, but besides from Batman constantly crying about like his girlfriend dumping him this was an overall good horror story but yeah it was like at one point he's like screaming at his parents if it wasn't for you mom and dad I would be a normal person I would have that have that hot GF it's like dude the hot GF only liked you because you were badass <laughs> because you were you know oh my god so yeah that was a two-parter here's the or outsiders comic book where they where they introduce the female Clayface. And despite the fact that this is like a two-parter, they only have the first issue, which that kind of sucked. No point reviewing this one. And uh, this one, I forget. Oh, yeah, this is just a remake. This is the remake of the Batman, of the first Clayface story, which, you know, the, fir the, fir the female Clayface goes to meet the original Clayface. And that's where that, that's the backstory why they're retelling this story. Uh, this one, the this one was cool. The Batman five hundred and fifty with Doug Moench, where it's like basically some some government agency. You got some cool covers here. Is performing experiments on. The fourth Clayface, who is the son of the fur Clayface and the female Clayface. His name is Cassius, right? And basically, a part of him, uh, they, 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 they salvage like a sample of his DNA, right? And it, it's sentient and combines with this dude and takes over his body. And the Batman has to go and stop this... Clayface monster who has the ability to melt people by looking at him, <laughs> right? And Clay and Batman looks very supernatural esque in this uh, bat in this comic book. He's like almost like Spawn. Uh, while this is going on, they send this agent after it. The agency that was ex ex experimenting on Clayface sends this this uh, chick after. After him, which is Cameron Chase, who hates super uh, hates superheroes, right? And like Batman calls her xenophobic, <laughs> which is like, oh my god, man, that was lame. But overall, I thought that was a great. That was this is probably one of the best stories in this comic book. Yeah. So other than that, um, there's. The only other good story in here is basically Hush, who tries to manipulate this uh, new clay face into helping him destroy Batman. This is the four-parter that's in this book. And Batman and um, Batman is getting blackmailed for... Well, Alfred is getting blackmailed for murder that the, this clay face, new clay face um, did. Right? It was like some porn director. And, you know, and Hush is playing mind games with Batman. Right. You got these two cop characters who are trying to, like, you know, uh, trying to, like, you know, solve the case on, you know, on the murder, right? And they think Alfred and Batman had something to do with it. And they also reintroduce Cassius, 
right? Because, like, Hush, Hush basically wants Clayface's powers and needs Cassius. And he's, like, telling this dude, the, the new Clayface, hey, if you don't get this guy's DNA, you'll die. Which, he, you know, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. All right? So that, I thought overall that was a great story. A good story, not great. The dialogue here and there was a little. And the, this last one. Is basically here you get to see the first clay face with his powers, right? And basically, what happened is like the secret society took over the the world, and Clayface wa uh, wants to prove to the secret society that hey, uh, I should be a part of your team. Ends up destroying the this uh, this army base that was supposed to be resistance. Against the secret society that was actually set up by the secret society. So this pisses off the secret society. So they blow up Clayface. He survives. And he goes on another heist. So yeah. So this book. Man this is hard to review when there's like so many stories. Overall I thought there was only like three stories in this book that I thought was, that was decent. The Doug Moanch one was the best one in my opinion. The Clayface 3 was alright, though Batman was... I didn't like how Len Wein wrote uh, Batman. He came off like an emo <laughs> in that one, where he's like... He's like literally being the crap out of villains and telling him, my girlfriend broke up with me, and that's why I'm being the crap out of you. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck? Um, the, the, the Golden Age Batman story that was in this book, uh, the first one, was, I thought that was really cool that they basically did Phantom of the Opera with Batman. That was a cool story. And then the fourth parter was good. But here's the problem. That's only like... There's only maybe like eight issues. Like half this book is decent and the rest is just okay. Right? So I don't know if I would recommend this. Because this is like a $30 book. And there's only half the stuff is good in it. So unless you can get this cheap, I wouldn't recommend it, All right? So I'm giving I'm giving this like a six out of ten. If you're a fan of Clayface, maybe check it out. But it's like, man, the original Clayface that everybody knows is barely in this book. He's like only in the the Clayface with the with his superpowers is only in the last story, and the, most of the book most of the book is like Clay, uh, Clayface stories with like the different Clayfaces, which when I read the um, and I've read a story with uh, Cassius and Batman Nightfall. I didn't even know that that Batman, that Batman, that the Clayface in that story was Batman Three. I thought that was the original Clayface having a baby with this female, with the female Clayface. But that was apparently the Preston Payne Bat, uh, Clayface, uh, Clayface Three. <laughs> oh my God, so hard to keep track of all of them. Yeah, but yeah, honestly, dude. Unless you can get this for cheap, uh, I wouldn't recommend. Which I got this for like at the dollar store <laughs> for like four bucks. So it was worth four bucks, but I don't know if you, unless you can get this for cheap, I would not recommend this, right? So my next review is going to be Batman Under the Red Hood, right? Which uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Kevin from Kevin Street uh, YouTube channel asked me to review, which I was going to review it anyway. But I also dug out my Red Hood comic book. Uh, this is Red Hood Lost Days. So we're going to also review this. Uh, we're going to review this after we review the Batman Under the Red Hood. And also, we're going to review the Batman, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, right? Which, it's been years since I've watched those movies. I haven't watched those movies since I was a kid, so... You know, it would it, it'd be interesting to, you know, rewatch those movies and, you know, to see if they're worth watching compared to, like, the superhero movies we have today. <laughs> Which, I'm going to be honest, I hated those movies as a kid. I would just watch them just because, you know, it had Batman <laughs> and, and you had the really cool colors and visuals <laughs> but yeah, man i i hate the bat nipples on on uh, the costumes uh i think it was like i think they introduced the bat nipples and what the schumacher movies oh my god <laughs> oh that was that was terrible but yeah like i said if you're a fan of clayface maybe check it out but 
other than that, don't get this book unless you can get it for cheap. Alright guys, that's it for this Batman Month vi uh, video. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, I might, if there's any c new comics you want me to pick up for this month, let me know in the comments. And I'm thinking, because like honestly dude, I was looking at the books that have come out uh, so far for August, and there's like really none that interest me at all. So I'm just thinking of just when I go to the comic book shop, I'm just going to go pick up uh, Batman 89. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you think there's any new comics coming out this month I should review. All right, guys.